We are Dukes and Bell. We start off every day and every hour by saying, hey, man, you better get on board, ATL. The Falcons looking good in these joint practices against the Dolphins. First preseason game is Friday. We don't know who's going to play, how much time they'll actually play. But I don't know if it matters because a lot of the work you wanted to see, if you're Coach Art um, and Arthur Smith and his staff, you got in over these last couple of days. Pre-game starts at 5, kicks at 7 on Friday. And, Mike, let's talk about what Arthur Smith had to say today because it was all about Desmond Ritter. I said this, guys, 7-on-7. Seven seven. Ritter was 4-for-4 four four in the red zone. He hit London, CP, Bijan, and Fitzpatrick for touchdowns. Um, things look good on uh, even on the defensive side as they did a really good job of limiting what the Dolphins' offense had or wanted to do. Mike McDaniel, Mike, comes out and says, eh, you know, I didn't necessarily think we were uh, that good today. And then he talked about the penalties that the Dolphins had. Yeah. They weren't disciplined. So, Listen, I don't know. Our coach sounds like he liked what he saw. Their coach sounds like he still feels like they got a lot of work to do. Yeah, and I know that, uh, as we said, if you weren't at camp or you hadn't seen some of the things we've got a chance to see, first things first, you notice the size and the athleticism. And that's one of the things which the Dolphins are noticing. And the fact that, you know, a big-time highfalutin offense is uh, is getting the best Falcons punch. They're not backing down from these dudes. And I know that everybody made so much yesterday over a Tyreek out of the Dolphins, but this video, Tyreek Hill running circles around Trey Flowers. Well, yeah, because Trey Flowers is a six foot three backup, backups, uh, you know, look more like a safety than a corner. Today's a day where apparently we put it to the Dolphins. Now, we're just going by published media accounts and what we heard from Scott Bear, who's there down there for the Falcons. I will say this, and I think he's going to join the show tomorrow. Cameron Wolf, uh, Turtle, is going to join us tomorrow from NFL Network. He was here watching us last week. Before that, he was in Carolina, and we were talking about Carolina and all the buzz around Bryce Young. Today, he's been down there watching these two practices. What did he say? After two days of joint practices, I came away impressed with the Falcons' new-look defense. Falcons' new-look defense. They didn't back down to the challenge of the Dolphins' uber-talented, speedy offense. He's not lying. they got speed all over the place. Right. And then he says Terry Fontenot's done a really great job of rebuilding this, this defense on all three levels. A team to watch this year. He's talking about us. Yeah, and I know that uh, for years we've been you – know, we told you guys last year at camp, Carl, we, we left broke camp. Carl goes, how many games did we win? I, think, I said, I think we win seven games this year. You know, and this is year, I think we win ten games because we had money to spend. We finally got out of the cap hell. So, guys, you want to be in the boat? Here's the boat. You want to be in the boat? You want to be outside? Get in. I think you want to jump in. And I know that seeing is believing until you see what we do in week one against Carolina because we always have that per portion of the fan base, which is on the fence. But there's some really good things happening with this team because they finally had the resources to go out and fix the things which needed fixing. All right, let's hear from Coach Arthur Smith. Uh, first of all, what did he think about Ritter? He's talking to D-Led here. So you hear this at the beginning, and guys, just so you know, they have a rapport. They play around with each other because right. D always asks the first question. He's the longest junior reporter to cover the Falcons, and that's the respect that they give him. So that's what you hear. But the question is, how did Ritter play today? You know, how was his practice against you watch the Dolphins? Were you still on the I was on your field today. <laughs> how did you think the red zone started? Um, started good. You scored touchdowns on all that's three. Good, yeah. Uh, is, yeah. All three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, in all seriousness, I thought it was pretty solid. You know, mm -hmm. there's always things to coach off of, but that's done a good job. He's not throwing it to the other team, guys. He hadn't been doing that in practice a lot. Now, do I want him to be more precise, Mike, when I to make mm -hmm. the decision of where he wants to go with the ball? Yes, it's bugged me. But I'm going to give that time to get, continue to develop. The thing that I'm loving right now, and he showed us this last year when he played, Mike, it was four games. He's not throwing it to the other team. You limit turnovers, guys. You give your team a chance to win. That is the biggest thing with young quarterbacks in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So if he's not throwing it to the other team and he's making the right decisions, which is what Arthur Smith said he's doing in these last two practices, that's good news for the Falcons. Here's Arthur talking about how much Ritter may <clears> play <throat> on Friday. Play for We're going to talk as a staff, uh, Josh, and you know, our guys are going to play in the preseason, but when and how much uh, we'll determine for this game in particular in the next 24 hours. You guys got to go back and see and see where we're at. If guys are a little nicked up, probably hold them. Um, so it's not just Dez, but if he goes out there, he'll be with the first offense as well. Right. Uh, and, we'll and then the other thing, too, we got to get an evaluation. Um, you know, they want to use the third quarterback. So there's some things, but our guys will play in the preseason um, to be determined about Friday night. All right. I know some Falcon fans want to see, you know, uh, all the starting starting starters out there on the offensive line from Jake Matthews, Bergeron. Obviously, you know, you want to see, you know, everybody we thought on the left side, which was the big giant question mark last year, created a lot of trouble for us. So do you think we'll see Ritter for a quarter? 
Game one. I mean, I'd like to. I just, I, I'd like to. And I understand Art, like Arthur's, the, the, the work that you need to see in the progression is happening in, in these camps. And other coaches are saying the same things about mm. their guys because, because of the three game preseason schedule, you have to have these kind of joint practices. So maybe he's seen enough that you won't get him. It's a buzzkill for us because we want to see Ritter out there and the fans want to see him too. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. Um, and again, I don't need to see a whole game. I just want him to get in rhythm. Like, I want to feel like he goes out, might go seven of eight. I don't know, 150 yards, four touchdowns, too much, too much. I just want right. to see him get into a rhythm. I'm joking. And then get him out of there. I, I, playing him for a series is just not enough for me. No, I mean, it, last year, two touchdowns, no interceptions, one turnover, running the football. You know, he got hit. That's that's how that happened. But the dude was, you know, again, the game plan was a bit much. And now, as he said uh, just a few weeks ago, everything started to come easier for him. So I know we got a lot of doubting Thomases out there on Desmond Ritter, and it would certainly go a long way to shutting them up if this guy went out there and balled out at least for a full series, taking a team down the field and doing something against Miami. Yeah, I totally agree. 404-726-0929. Also, the Falcons today were trying to work on the run game. Okay, you're not taking guys down to the ground. Hmm. It's still practice. You can do that on Friday in the preseason game. But here's what Arthur Smith said about the run game today. Two things. One, you know, you obviously want to see if the tracks are, are right. Mm-hmm. It's blocked correctly, and then it's just subjective, too. You know, sometimes if you're tacking Tyler out here, like mm-hmm. some of his arm tackles may mm-hmm. be real, some not. And sometimes you, you don't see something on the back guy. You know, their guys did a nice job, and we coach our guys to do that. Mm-hmm. When you're playing the back side, guys pull up in mm-hmm. the game that may be a tackle, but they're pulling mm-hmm. up so to create a pile of bodies. Mm-hmm. So you got to take that into consideration, too, when you're evaluating it. You just want to see a hey, technique coming off or tracks good. Was the hole actually there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. There are things, obviously, and, and – He's a perfectionist, that guy that you just that, the coach right there. Right. It's never going to be a hundred for him. Like no. Mike, for him, he's always looking at the little things and blocking and what guys aren't doing. We talk to him and he goes, "I got to look at the film." And we're like, "It looked good." He's always looking for something. Right. And uh, the, look, the guy, you know, we're going to run the football a lot. A lot of guys. It's funny. I, I was doing. A, don't laugh at me. I know it's early in the season. I did a mock damn draft. Oh, day. don't don't do well, it. Well, I mean, hey, some knuckleheads are already doing their drafts. I mean, they're real drafts. You got to wait till Labor Day, man. You yeah. can see the injuries and the roster moves. But I digress. But no, I mean, just curious, the one guy you feel most confident about as far as points in fantasy, and that translates to points in football, is going to be B. John Robinson. And then, is it going to be Pitts? Is it going to be, by the way, Pitts, and I brought this up with Carl earlier in the show, we were talking about what do you see from Pitts. Pitts did everything but score a touchdown in the game in Miami in 21. I was down there for that before I had too many Bacardis, but I do remember, Carl, that there was a sequence. He had that amazing one-handed catch. He goes for 163 yards. That was Matt Ryan delivering the football. Last year, we only got to see that for a little bit because, you know, let's be honest, Mariota couldn't keep it in the same zip code. No, he could not. And by the time Ritter got on the field, he was banged up. Well, yeah, he was gone for the last six games. Hey, uh, let's hear from Desmond Ritter. He went on the Rich Eisen show today as we're talking about the Falcons. Uh, Tomorrow, guys, it'll be walked through. They'll get a little rest, and then Friday will be the first preseason game. Uh, right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Ritter was asked by Rich Eisen, Mike, about proving the doubters wrong. And Rich Eisen even said, you know, you got a lot of haters, and this is what Ritter said. For me, I really feel like it's just going out and just, you know, proving everyone wrong, you know, just still having that chip on my shoulder, um, you know, who I've been to, you know, coming out of high school. And so for me, uh, you know, not much has changed. Just going out, working every single day, worked every day in the offseason, uh, just to, you know, be the best player and best teammate that I can be when, it, when time comes. Okay, so last two days, again, Art saying his decision-making has been good. Uh, Ritter saying the goal is bigger than just anything individual. It's all about the team. But, Mike, we wondered if they had reached out to him during that whole Lamar Mm. Jackson situation that we were talking about. And listen, you guys know, we don't back off of stuff. If Lamar Jackson was available, which obviously he wasn't now, we know this, we said we should be in the mix. We didn't know what our quarterback situation was going to be. No, and whatever you thought about Ritter, I mean, Lamar Jackson was a proven entity. We can debate his, you know, his sturdiness with some of the injuries, but the guy's a former MVP. That beats a guy who's played four games. And I think any team out there worth their salt would at least kick the tires. Ravens always had the final right of refusal on this deal, so we never really were in the tall weeds peeing with the big dogs on Lamar Jackson. Matter of fact, we were one of the first teams to go, we are not interested in Lamar Jackson. Now, some of that was, I think, some owners – it was more pushback from what Deshaun Watson got in Cleveland. What do you want to call that collusion? But we, maybe because we believe in Ritter, said that. Well, Ritter said today on the Rich Eisen Show, the team reached out to him early on when all of this stuff started happening, and we didn't know this, and basically said, Chill, you're our guy. Listen to Ritter. They definitely have reached out to me. I was not the one who reached out. But, um, right. yeah, for me, like I said, you know, at the end of the day, you know, whether they brought someone in or didn't bring someone in, you know, I was still going to put my head down and grind every single day. So they did reach out to you during that process and say, 
um, pay no mind to that? Yeah, you know, you know, throughout um, throughout you know the off season, they, mm-hmm. they would just let me know that you know they want me to be their guy, and you know we're gonna go out and work. What did that mean to you? Uh, for me, you know, it meant everything. You know, it meant that obviously one that they had drafted me for a reason and a true reason. Um, and two, that they had seen, you know, the work that I put in, you know, over the, the course of last season, you know, being a backup um, and just putting in the work every single day and knew that, you know, I had the, the intangibles and everything to do to go out there and lead a team. See, this I put on the Falcons because y'all were playing with our emotions. If you guys would have told us from the jump right after the season was over, right. he's our guy. We're not bringing anybody in. We may draft another quarterback to back him up, right. but he's our guy. They didn't do that, Mike. They played with us and went, we're not sure. Well, you know, we're going to see what happens. You guys remember this. Right. Oh, we'll see. So you gave us this this interpretation that you weren't fully sold on him. Right. Then the Lamar Jackson stuff pops up, and now all of a sudden you're calling him and going, you're our guy, and yeah. then they had to clarify. Because, you know, if you go back, I know it's, it's a ways back now, but when you go back to the end of last season, knowing that you were going to finally come out of this salary cap, you know, situation you were in, if you were interested in Derek Carr, you could have made a play for that guy. You know, I mean, or you say, I got a guy that I believe has got bigger upside. And, you but know, it wasn't cheaper. until the March stuff correct, happened. Correct. Exactly right. So that's why, I mean, it wasn't like we were ma- making stuff up. It was it was very vague, yeah. to your point. Yeah, and I wish, again, it wasn't for Ritter to say, because behind closed doors, they were saying this to him. It's not his job to come out and say, hey, I'm going to be yeah. quarterback number one. Yeah. It's I just talked guy. to the team and they said I'm the guy. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so uh, this comes from Big Speaker. He says, uh, Mike Bell, ATL, put him up, C. Dukes. So, Dukes, after hearing you guys report how good we're playing in Miami and how these practices have gone, I'm starting to look ahead. <laughs> I mean, look, can we just fill up Mercedes Benz on opening week, week one? You know what? That's can a, we just do that? That's a good thing. I mean, look, you're right. I, and I get it. You got to maybe go through tickets in a secondary market if you don't got the PSL. I get that. But can we get out, get in there and not have a bunch of Carolina fans because they're going to be hyped over Bryce Young? And let's get in there and let's get, let's get things going, man. I mean, we shouldn't be in, the, in, a, in a big market like this with the NFL team trying to convince you because, and I get it, not everybody has the time to go to practice or read everything about it, but this team is vastly improved. And they were doing well and getting by. Look, 7-10 and 10 and 7-10 and 10 with a bunch of stiffs isn't too shabby either. And that's how good Arthur Smith is. Mike and I have had a lot of moments on this show. Big moments. Why we are who we are. <laughs> But this goes back, Mike, 20. What year did we start 5 0? What year was that? That was 2017. Was it 2017? Yeah, 2017. No, no, 2014. 2014. 2014, yeah, because uh, it was, no, no, it was Smitty's, Smitty got clunked. In, it, it, was, was, it was DQ. It was, it was Dan Quinn's first year, 2015. We started the season 5 0, and then we were 6 and 1. Yes. So we come in, we win our fifth game, and right. that week I, I said, this is where this comes from, I'm starting to look ahead because. Who in the hell goes 5-0 and and doesn't make the playoffs? Well, a coach that then went lose six in a row, that was kind of Dan Quinn's him. Big speaker, appreciate that, man. You've been listening a long time. We love right. you, bro. Thanks for listening. Are you looking ahead? By the way, what does is, what is Nostra Duke see as far as wins? You know, to, to remind the folks. Well, listen, first of all, I, I am just loving the vibe of where this team is and what's going on. I just want you guys to buy into that. I'm going with 10. You go higher than 10? I, I, I'm with you. I think 10 or 11 okay. games, Mike. I'm with you right there. You said this months ago, and everybody's like, you're crazy. Right. I, I'm I am with crazy. You. I'm going with 10. 